On the 3rd of August 2015, a lifting rig of a section of the Queen Juliana Bridge in Alphenand der Rhein capsized. Both cranes and the lifted bridge section fell on the surrounding buildings. Many were completely destroyed. Miraculously, no persons were injured. Why did the lifting rig collapse? How did the parties involved assess the risks of this complex operation? And how did they manage the safety risks for the surrounding area? The Dutch Safety Board started an investigation into these questions. The municipality of Alphenand der Rhein commissioned the renovation of the bridge to a consortium of a steel constructor and a construction company. The steel constructor hired a crane operator to lift the bridge section. The crane operator subsequently hired the barge operator. A large mobile construction crane of 700 tons on the first barge and a small construction crane of 400 tons on a narrower barge were deployed for this lifting operation. The intention was to simultaneously lift the bridge section from a third barge in a tandem lift operation. The bridge section would then be manoeuvred in between the two cranes before being tilted into an almost horizontal position. The two barges would then sail 100 metres where the bridge section was to be raised and fitted into the existing bridge structure. The crane operator and barge operator had worked together before and they believed in the feasibility of the plan, as long as the work was undertaken cautiously and if ballasting of the barges would be done in time. Floating objects, such as barges, can move freely in water. The amount of movement depends on the stability of the rig. The more stability, the less movement and the sooner it returns to its starting position. Stability is determined by the width and depth of the barge and by the height of the centre of gravity in the crane masts. The lifting rig as used on the 3rd of August, in particular the barge bearing the small construction crane, demonstrated insufficient stability and started to slope to such an extent that the mast of the crane failed, causing the crane itself to topple, thereby pulling the bridge section with it, which in turn also pulled over the large construction crane. The complexity of the lifting operation had been underestimated by the parties concerned. There was a lifting plan that failed on critical elements. The cranes were too high in relation to the width of the barges. In addition, several heavy objects were placed on deck, further reducing the stability. There was no margin to absorb additional forces caused, for example, by natural bending of the mast of the crane, the movement of the cranes, or a gust of wind. A relatively small movement of the cranes caused the whole construction to topple. The Dutch Safety Board recalculated the initial stability and concludes that even if the lifting operation had been carried out faultlessly, the accident could not have been avoided. The lifting rig was situated in the densely populated centre of Alphenand der Rhein. The largest crane towered with 44 metres far above the surrounding buildings. None of the parties involved recognised that the lifting of the bridge section engendered risks for the immediate surroundings. Within the construction consortium, the construction company, as project manager, occupied a key role in coordinating risks. However, the construction company saw the hoisting of the bridge section as a responsibility of the steel constructor, and therefore not its own. Neither noticed that the lifting plan was inadequate, and they let happen that the lifting started with an unsafe rig. Safety focused merely on the workers and the construction site itself. The municipality of Alphenand der Rhein attached considerable importance to avoiding additional nuisance for the local residents during the renovation work. 
When issuing the license for the renovation, the municipality could have demanded a construction safety plan for the area describing safety measures, but failed to do so. As a result, the execution of the work, including the lifting work and the related safety risks for the surrounding area, remained unconsidered. The Dutch Safety Board concludes that various parties blindly trusted on one another's expertise and relied on the responsibility of the other parties in the chain. This pattern was reflected throughout the project organization, from barge operator through to municipal authority. The Dutch Safety Board has the following recommendations. To the construction companies involved, for future building projects ensure that adequate risk management is performed for the entire construction process. To the Minister for Housing and the central government sector, ensure that any building project is designated one party responsible for risk management. Enlist in the building decree when a construction safety plan is needed. 